Hi there, I'm Lori Brock. This is my sister Kathy Foley. Hey. We are DIY with Lucy and Ethel. Today we're going to do a quick and easy tutorial to show you how to complete one of our craft kits that we have for sale now on our Facebook page. So we're going to change the camera angle and get started. I'm going to do the yakking. Kathy will do the painting. See you in a minute. Alrighty, to begin with, you're going to pull the piece of barn board out of your kit. This one is a dual one that we've done. We're using recycled boards for these projects from fences um, primarily. So Kathy's going to go ahead and one coat is fine. We like to, we like to have um, a lot of the grain showing through. You're certainly welcome to do another coat if you want. We're using just uh, acrylic craft paint for this. This is Deco Art Vintage White that we've got going on. Just a word about the brush that she's using. For this rough sort of wood, we use a two inch chip brush. Chip brushes are uh, very inexpensive and they, uh, they, don't get, they don't get all chewed up like a foam brush would. Like you wouldn't really wanna use a foam brush with this rough fence board. You wouldn't necessarily have a good result with it. So we also, when we're, when we're using these rough boards, we typically just paint the fronts. And so that's what she's doing here. Again, there's a lot of imperfections in the wood, but we love that. That um, shows some character. So she's got that painted. That didn't take very long, yeah? She's gonna set it aside and we're gonna bring out a board that was painted yesterday. Now, just a word. It's super important when you're using these vinyl stencils that you let the paint dry. Um, when we do classes, sometimes we use hair dryers to move the process along, but when you're using a vinyl stencil, it is adhesive and it has a tendency to pull up paint. So what we really suggest is that you let the, the board dry at least several hours, preferably overnight. So that's what we've done with this board. So now we have uh, our dry board. And we're going to show you how to place the stencil. The let's just show them the the parts. We have the the vinyl stencil has three three components to it. There is the paper backing. There, let's show them the paper backing. Yes, the paper backing, the actual blue vinyl that is the stencil itself, and then over the top there is some clear transfer tape. So Kathy's going to begin by flipping the stencil over and tearing off the paper backing. You just tear it away from yourself. When you do this, what you want to make sure is that none of the, that the blue stencil all stays together. If you have some lifting, you just put it back in place. So there's our, there's our stencil and we're going to place it on the board, or Kathy's going to place it on the board. And... You get it where you want it. Sometimes you have to eyeball it a little bit. And then, when you, she's using her fingers just to go over the design. You want to make sure that the design is adhered to the wood. And here's a little note from um, something else you might see. There's a lot of people who feel like at this step you need to use a credit card or something really, like you really have to work to adhere the stencil to the board and we think that that that's that's going to actually cause you trouble with um, lifting paint off so just use your finger and make sure that the that the design is adhered and then here she is taking off the clear transfer tape and at this point you're doing again you want to make sure that all the blue stays together so if any of that blue vinyl comes up you just stick it back down where it belongs. So that's what she's doing here. Sometimes when you're doing, if you have like a little E's and A's or commas, they have a tendency to want to escape. So getting it off. All right. And then she's going to do the same thing with her fingers and make sure that the design is in place onto the board. If you take the time to do this, what you're trying to do is avoid bleeding underneath. So you want to get it stuck down to avoid that. Okay. 
if you hear anything sounds like a drag race we do apologize we do have a busy road outside our shop so that's what the noise is going to be all right so you see where you have a little bit of buckling down at the bottom that really doesn't matter that's irrelevant because the design is is stuck down to the board that's what we're looking for all right so here's where the painting begins we're using a couple of colors again this is deco art this is a what color is this there folk art. Fo oh folk art okay we use um, any of the of the acrylic craft paints. This one is what color? This is pure orange. Pure orange folk and art. And then we have true burgundy as well, if they want to add that extra color. Okay, Kathy's going to do a little a little blending of colors. All right, now I want you to slow down here a little bit. Kathy paints very, very fast. So I'm going to explain a couple things as she goes here. We really like domed stencil brushes, which is what we have. And you'll see that she blots, she gets this, she's loading her brush. So she puts the paint on and then she blots it off. This is super important because you don't, this will help you from keep from bleeding onto the paint. You don't, um, the paint gets forced up into those bristles and then you can control how it comes off. One, uh, one real problem with painting with this is, is paint bleed. So if you blot, you use small amounts of paint. When I paint, I usually go over, I think we're just gonna do one coat here necessarily, but maybe we'll do two. We'll see what she does. She, I'm not the boss of her. <laughs> um, but I like to go over two or three times. And then you get that really kind of cool stencil look where it's somewhat uneven, but you don't have a lot of blobs of paint. What you do not want to do is roll this paint on with a roller. I hate it when people do that. Uh, just do as she's doing here. It's this up and down pouncing motion. And you'd be surprised. You don't have to add much paint. In fact, you're going to be blotting a lot of it off. Like she's doing here. I'm using a lot of what's on my paper towel. Kathy actually has been teaching painting off and on for, what, 30 years, 40 years? I'm not that old at least 30 but she knows what she's doing and again we like this domed brush as a this is a domed 5 8 brush as opposed to sometimes you'll see flat stencil brushes I really don't know why they're called stencil brushes I can't get them to work for me at all and we like these and the the bristles are the right um, probably degree of stiffness to just help you get a satisfactory result. I guess we could sing during this part of it. Um, all right, and also, during this step, when you're done, do not be tempted to use a hair dryer on it. If you were to use a hair dryer on this vinyl stencil, it, really bad things can happen, and we've had them happen to people where it melts onto the board. So, but this part, you'll be able, we'll be able to peel it off. It doesn't have to be completely dry. Doesn't that look amazing? I think it looks beautiful. All right. Now she's going to use a little bit of the red. You, since it's in the same, the shades are very similar. You don't have to change color. You don't have to change brushes. And then she's just going to tip and blend some onto the edges of the leaf. Lovely. So once again, I'll just reiterate what we say in the classes, small amounts of paint. You can always add paint. It's really hard to get it off once it's down. Small amounts of paint and up and down pouncing motion. There we go. And then you see we don't you don't have to let it dry all that long. You can peel this part right off, which is very I always find it very satisfying myself. You might be a little more careful with this. The tool she's using is actually dental tools that you can buy at Harbor Freight. But you got to make sure all that blue stuff. Now we want the blue stuff to all come off. 
There you go. Look at that. Yay. All right, now we're going to switch boards again because this is new and I don't want her to flip it over. I'm going to show you how, or she's going to show you, how we put the wire hanger onto the back. I kind of missed that, what you did. Do you want to do it onto that, that one that you drew? That, that one that we, we already dried? We just want to demonstrate on that how to put the... That one's not already dried. I used the one that was already dried. Oh, sorry. We used the one that was already dried. It's actually, it's actually fine. Okay, okay. Well, she's going to flip it over and we're going to show you how to put on the wire and screws in case that throws you. So you explain this step here, Kathy. You can measure if you have a husband that will just die if everything is not measured or even just eyeball it like I do. Screw your screws down about halfway through the lath in the back. You just want to hear it, but you don't want to keep going too far. You come through the front. Wrap the wire around from one screw to the other screw. And just make sure your wire doesn't isn't going to be loose and come up above your board. Trim off any excess. Wrap it around. And there you go. All right. All done. Now it's ready to be hung. And at this point, and we won't we won't we won't have to show that. But if you wanted to put a coat of poly on this point, if you wanted to put it on the on the porch, or it does help with the color fading, uh, then this would be at the, the point at which you would do it. I guess we are going to show it. We've got a little no, bit we're of... we're just going to show this can. Yeah. Oh, it's too oh, hold it up here. It's a can of Varathane. It's, just make sure it's water-based poly. And then you could just use a, a chip brush like the one we used and just brush it on a, a one coat, two coats if you felt like it. This kind of water-based poly um, is good for not ye yellowing and then it just helps protect your board a little bit. All right, that's it. Send us pictures of your completed projects to Facebook and keep watching the channel. We'll add more tutorials as we go and let's go, let's go have some fun.